3D printing is awesome and I love being able to make all sorts of different things. If you really want to go for that fine detail so you can print miniatures and things like that, resin printing is definitely the way to go but it does come with a couple of pain points in the post-processing. Today, I wanna to go over five different items to help alleviate or mitigate the pain of resin printing. With FDM printing, once you're done printing on the build plate, generally you can just take it off and you're ready to go. Resin, on the other hand, there's a bunch more steps that you need to do. After you get it off of the build plate, then you need to rinse off the extra resin and that can take a number of different chemicals. Also, you need to then clean off those supports. Then you need to post cure it with UV and then maybe remove some more supports or sand it up. So there's a little bit more work there. The number one thing is to have a system in place for post-processing after you're done with the printer. For me, there are five main steps to a good post-processing of your resin prints. That's transportation, cleanup, support removal, drying, and then curing. What I think is really the important thing here, you might do those in different orders or repeat some steps. It'll depend on your tools, but have your things ready to go. I have my specific clippers for resin printing and my putty knife. I have these trays that I made custom so I can move my print from here to where I'll be cleaning. You wanna have your stuff together and easy to do or you're gonna find yourself dreading printing. Number two, I recommend upgrading those small tools that come with your printer. Mainly the wire clippers. I really like these Ignin 170s. They work a lot better, they're nicer in the hand. You can get these for about five bucks or I think they're like five for 20 bucks on Amazon. I really like these clippers, but I do think you should upgrade those. Same thing with the putty knife. Typically the putty knives that come with them have a much shorter blade and they're stiffer. This purdy one, while it was like $10, the blade is nice and thin and you can really get under the prints to help pop it off. The third thing is getting a flex plate for your resin printer. I have one of these for my FDM printers, but boy does it make a huge difference for the resin printer. Plus if you get this, then you're not gonna need to get that scraper that I showed in tip number two. These things are fabulous. I like the BQ ones because it doesn't have anything written on there that's gonna end up showing up on the bottom of your prints. And they're pretty cheap, so you can buy two of these. That way, as you take one off, then you can just slip another one on and start printing right away. And you never even have to take out the plate, which means your alignment stays a little bit better. These are great if you print big, flat things because you can just bend them and pop the prints off. I haven't had anything break once I started using the flex plate. One little tip though, if you do get these, I like to take 180 grit sandpaper and sand the faces so there's a little bit more grip on there. That's worked pretty well for me. Tip number four is to use a little bit of lubricant with your printer. Now you have your lead screws and yeah, you need to do some maintenance on those, but this is really for your FEP film. So if you put this on the top of the film, What'll happen is it will help release the prints easier that are up against there and they won't stick as much. There have been some cases that I've heard of people having the prints stick so much that it pulls off the magnetic base or pulls off that flex plate. I have never had that issue, but I do use this PTFE lube on there. It also just helps my prints look a little bit better and you don't hear that pull off sound as it's sticking really hard to that. It also extends the life of your FEP film. Tip number five, this is a big one and a little bit expensive, but get a wash and cure station. When I first started out, I used to take my prints, put them in a little jar with acetone, swish it around, take them out, let them dry, and then I would actually take them outside, put them out in the sun, and let them cure that way. It worked, but it was so annoying that I actually didn't print much when I first got it. To help alleviate that, I later picked up this pickle making tray. So you could take your miniatures, have the acetone in here, clean it off, and then it would drain out, and then you could take it after it was dry, and I built this curing station. So it has a bunch of LED strips in here, UV LED strips, and then you can put your miniature in there, 
This little tray turns it around and it gets cured much more evenly and systematically. Now that was all nice and fine, but then I got this wash and cure station, which is fabulous. Actually, my friend gave this to me and I'm so grateful. What you can do is this one is specifically built for this printer. You can take the plate and then it'll fit on here. You can clean it off, take it out, pop off your miniature, come back in, rinse it off, then take it apart, grab this little thingy here. Oh, easy. <laughs> Put your miniature onto there and then you can set a time for it. So I like to do my miniatures, for example, at four minutes. I set it on here, press the button, it spins around, cures with the UV LED lights for four minutes, automatically turns off. I could have just left the room and it's good to go. This is so nice to have. Here's a bonus that I have. It's not really an item for the printer, but it's actually the resin that you use. If you can get away with it and you don't need the properties of something different, the water washable resin is fabulous. Most resins you have to use isopropyl alcohol or denatured alcohol to clean them, but these water washable ones are great because you just need to use water. I like it because I just have one less chemical and it doesn't stink. You do have to be careful with the resin. You can't just dump down your wastewater down the sink. You need to let it outside to evaporate and fully cure. But other than that, it's great and it works really good for me. I use it 90% of the time. Some of these tips may seem like a no-brainer, but these are the things that have really helped me. Let me know down in the comments of any of these things that you really like, or if you have other tips, I would love to hear them. Anything to make the process better would be awesome. Also, if you 3D print with an FDM printer and want a little bit of ease there too, Check out this filament dry box that I designed. It's really nice for keeping your filament dry, but also just ready to print super slick. Thanks so much for watching and take care.